May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be always pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. So, a while ago on the radio, I heard a man who was deeply passionate about what must be an almost useless supplement. It's almost useless. Now, there's a big difference between useless and almost useless. You see, it's iodine. And in your entire life, you need one whole teaspoon of iodine. Which has got to be pretty close to useless, doesn't it? I, I can go through more coffee than that just getting out of bed in the morning. Uh, but, without that one teaspoon, spread appropriately through your lifespan, all sorts of problems, um, mental development problems, children that you might have, have cognitive delays and all sorts of problems. So iodine, almost useless, but there's a big difference between almost useless and useless. And I feel like ethics courses are like iodine. They're about 99.9% .9 useless. And 0.1% really, really, really important. And here's why. Because most of the time, we're not as smart as we like to think we are. Most of the time, we don't think about things. We see something, and we react. And 15 minutes later, the brain catches up and goes, Oh, that was a good idea. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but that 0.1% of the time, the IND moments, really important. For me, they happen about once every four years uh, when, we, when, we're vote, when we're electing politicians. And I actually ask myself the question, as a Christian, who should I be voting for? Uh, should, whose policies and ideas most closely match what I believe God would want us to do. You know? Is it the Hunters and Fishers Party? Is it the Car Enthusiasts Party? Is it the Greens, Labors? Uh, the, you know, there's lots of them. <coughs> Being honest, about the rest of the time, it takes my brain a good 15 minutes to catch up with any decision I've made. You see, what happens is we see something, it goes straight through our heart, and then the message trickles up to our brain as to what we've decided. That's how human beings operate, most of the time. Most of the time. And that's why it's so important to come to church. Odd segue, I know. Um, you see, we train the heart. Not the heart muscle, but our emotional side. By what we hear and see and imagine on a regular basis. So if we hear the Word of God... <coughs> and we allow it to sink into us on a regular basis, that trains the heart. And so instinctively, we react correctly. That's a big part of why we say things over and over and over again in church. It trains the heart. It trains that part of us that makes the decisions a lot sooner. In today's Gospel, we get a really important message that we need to revisit. And it's how does Jesus deal with imaginary lines? It's a really important thing to consider. Um, you see, because in society we draw these imaginary lines, and we then we, we, we treat them like they're real things, like they're impenetrable walls that no one could possibly cross. We do it all the time. In, in Jesus' day, there were two imaginary lines that he deals with here. The first is the imaginary line between people who matter because they're grown-ups and people who don't matter because they're children. So in Jesus' day, children didn't matter. You had to survive to be an adult before you even <coughs> mattered a little bit. Um, and if you were a slave, that was your best you could aim for, is a little bit. And people are bringing their children to Jesus and the disciples had this imaginary line and they built a wall Little children don't matter, so they can't come to Jesus. Jesus matters, little children don't. You can't cross that line. And I like how Jesus deals with it. He doesn't even step over the line, because it's imaginary. He just ignores it. 
No, the children, they can't. They matter. In fact, they matter so much, you might want to pay attention to how they react to the message of the kingdom of God. And if you know small children, how do they react? Boots and all to everything. Lollies, how do they react? Yes! Kingdom of God, how do they react? Same way. Yes! This is how we should be reacting to Jesus. Pay attention to them. They matter. The imaginary line, not so much. And so we train our hearts. And when we see little children, we go, they matter. It's taken 2,000 years, society's regrets. One of the other imaginary lines, and we still draw this imaginary line, by the way, is people who are rich matter more than people who are poor. We draw this line all the time. A young man comes to Jesus and he says, what do I have to do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus lists off the commandments. Well, most of them. He lifts off the ones that are about relating to human beings. He's not worried about this young man's relationship with God. He's worried about his relationship with people. And the kid goes, the young man goes, I, I, I've done that my whole life. And Jesus says, you've still got a problem. It's wealth. I need you to cross the imaginary line. It's not even there. But you have to cross it so you know you're following God. And the young man leaves and he's sad. And we never hear from him again. And I hope, I hope that although he is sad, he manages to come round and actually become a follower of Jesus. We don't know. We don't know. So I like to hope that something good came out of it for him personally. But for us, we need to be reminded of the imaginary lines. And that's one of the lines we still draw. And the question is, how does Jesus deal with it? He can't be bothered because it's just an imaginary line. So he just ignores them. And he moves on straight through them. So the first thing we need to do is we need to train our hearts. So that when we see people whose society says aren't important, we recognize 15 minutes before our brain gets there that this person matters because they are valued by God as you and I are. Our heart needs to tell us that, but the brain will catch up later. It's good at um, rationalizing the decisions we make. And when we confront imaginary lines that might be preventing people from coming to God, we need to confront them. Either ignore them, if we're the ones putting them in place, or we need to speak against them. If society is so entrenched, with that, so in love with that imaginary line, that it can't let it go. But we need to do these things. Now, Back to our ethics course that where we make our decisions on 0.1% of the time. They do matter. Remember that ID that matters profoundly even though you only need a tiny bit of it. Ethical thinking matters because it's those moments where we start to look at the world with fresh eyes, where we engage our brain that has been trained by our immersion in the love of God. And we look to the world, and we look at it with fresh eyes, and we start to see what is wrong, and we can then act against it. So I don't want to say, check your brain at the door, because I think that's a really bad idea. What I want to say is, remember that most of your decisions are made by the heart, and train it well. But bring your brain along for the journey, because when that operates first, we have the opportunity to make incredibly profound changes in the world. Because that's when we start to look at the world and we recognize those imaginary lines are just that, a figment of our imagination. And we can speak courageously against them. And we can change the world. We can be like that young man. We might be confronted by what we're asked to give up. But there will also be a reward for us in our relationship with God and our connection with the kingdom of heaven. So that's why church matters. That we might train our minds and our hearts so that when we're out in the world we might act and react in the way God would have us as disciples of Christ.
In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.